So then man up and act responsible. Gordon Ramsay is famous for his numerous television shows revolving around food, from Hell's Kitchen to MasterChef. However, with Ramsay's hilarious insults and takedowns, he had to spread his talents into the hotel world, too, with his hugely popular television show, Hotel Hell. So we went through all the episodes of Hotel Hell to find Gordon Ramsay's top 10 moments hosting the show, proving not only can Ramsay mentor the best in the restaurant profession, but also the best in the hotel industry. Gordon Ramsay and the Sushi Scandal my first impressions of the food here is that it's as bad as the rooms. Of course, with his background, one of the first places that Ramsay always has to check is the hotel restaurant. However, at the Chester Hotel, Ramsay was in for a fishy meal. Run by a chef who had grown up at a Japanese restaurant, Ramsay was disappointed that the woman had never actually worked as a cook in her family's restaurant, but had only ever washed the dishes. After that suspicious news, things went from bad to worse, as the food was excruciatingly slow to arrive to the table. Ramsay gave up and left to take a nap on the sofa due to an hour-long wait, forcing the confused waitress to hunt him down in the hotel lobby for his lunch. Upon returning to the dining room, Ramsay was disappointed by the sushi. First, he struggled to fit a humongous piece in his mouth and challenged the waitress to try and fit one in her mouth, too. When they each failed, he ended up comparing the sushi rolls to dentures. Now I know how my granddad feels when he puts his new teeth in. <laughs> Another type of sushi he was given brought out even more of his disgust when the chef combined strawberries and raw fish in a dish called Strawberry Fields. Ramsay was absolutely affronted by this creation, and because of it, he felt compelled to apologize to every Japanese chef in America for defacing the name of sushi. In reference to the classic British band, Ramsay finished up his insults by exclaiming that he would rather eat a beetle than have that sushi. When it comes to a traditional sushi recipe, Ramsay clearly wishes that the chef would just let it be. There's nothing healthier with my lunch. Maybe a health warning. Liking this video? Take a second to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. With that done, let's get back to Ramsay's hotel horrors. Ramsay to the rescue. You can't just give up. Ramsay is quick thinking, and his ability to take charge came in handy when he paid a visit to the Keating Hotel. While many of the owners and staff may leave Hotel Hell episodes wishing that they had never crossed Ramsay's path, that was not the case for the head chef of the Keating Hotel. After a disastrous dining experience that included a chocolate and bacon pizza, Ramsay went into the kitchen to speak with the head chef, Brian. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know where to start. I, I'm... During their conversation, Brian became faint and stumbled and Ramsay caught him before he could trip. Things only went downhill from there, with Brian growing more and more ill until he fell to the ground. Ramsay didn't break stride, but instead remained calm under pressure, trying to support the man while yelling for emergency services to be called. Ramsay showed a softer side as he comforted Brian while waiting for paramedics, crouching by his side and getting him water while explaining that no job is worth that kind of health impact. Can I have some water, please, and a cold cloth? Try and stay alert. Fortunately, Brian made a full recovery, partially aided by Ramsey's first responder skills. Gordon Ramsay finds plumbing problems. You're kidding me. As an on-the-move celebrity, it's obvious that Gordon Ramsay has had his fair share of hotel experiences. However, nothing quite prepared him for entering his room at the Juniper Hill Inn. While certain small issues like subpar decor may be easily overlooked, it was impossible for Ramsay to overcome the plumbing issue with the hotel, which caused his suite to smell like raw sewage. I mean, that is horrific. Oh my god, it smells like sewage. Marketed as a romantic escape for townspeople and tourists alike, Ramsay quickly decided that the only escape he needed was an exit from that particular room. When pressed by a nauseated Ramsay, the hotel owner admitted that the plumbing issue had been unresolved for four months and that the sewage-scented room retailed for $350 a night. Uh, howdy, 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 howdy. A lot of money to pay to want to rip off your nose. In the end, Ramsay simply couldn't stand it and begged to be moved to another, less aromatic room. This is crazy. It is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I've got to get out of here. Gordon Ramsay hates post-its. What I'm frustrated about is what I'm discovering. No one likes to have people snooping around their stuff, but usually passive-aggressive notes are exchanged on roommates' leftovers, not between a boss and his staff. Ramsay found that this was not the case at the River Rock Inn, where an overbearing owner, Ken, had some less-than-charitable feelings towards his employees. This is insane. 
I can't believe Ken is so passive aggressive with his staff. While exploring the hotel, Ramsey found item after item covered in warnings from Ken, including a cookie jar with a message stating that if any cookies were stolen, the perpetrator would have to start looking for a new job. More notes were found on pens and even a power drill, leading Ramsey to sarcastically label Ken as charming. But of course, Ramsey didn't stop there. He then organized a taped meeting with the staff to try and get some answers about the bizarre notes. They call those Kenny's nasty grams. I mean, is this a joke? Definitely not the kind of candy grams you want to receive from your crush. <laughs> Ramsey versus Robert Dean II. It's not all about you, Robert. Robert's world, Robert's bubble, Robert's dream. While Ramsey may be known for the insults he throws around to contestants on his shows, he knows how to treat his real staff with respect and professionalism. That's why during his stay at the Juniper Hill Inn, Ramsey was shocked to hear that the owner, Robert Dean II, was not properly paying his chefs, housekeepers, or hotel managers. When employees began opening up to Ramsey about their financial struggles in relation to working for Robert, it was revealed that some of them had paychecks that were five weeks overdue. This set a fire underneath Ramsey, who promptly confronted Robert about the lack of professionalism. You're not the lord of the manor. And if there's one thing that Hell's Kitchen and Master Chef have taught us, it's that you should never talk back to Ramsey when he's on the attack. Unfortunately for Robert, he must have missed that lesson, because instead of taking responsibility for his actions, he simply said that his staff could quit if they were unhappy. Big mistake. Ramsey blew up, saying that without the hard work of his staff, Robert wouldn't even be there. He followed this up by asking Robert point blank, Are you always this pathetic? As if that wasn't enough, Ramsey continued his tirade against Robert and his morals, finally ending his outburst by demanding that Robert man up and grow a pair. And start growing a pair to sort of understand the mesh you're in. Not exactly a five-star review. Gordon Ramsay and the Karaoke Queen. It's like vomit, that I guess thing. Throughout the series, Gordon Ramsay has met his share of eccentric hotel owners, but Callie, owner of Maison de Messia, might take the prize as the funkiest character of them all. After arriving at her failing hotel, Ramsay stopped by the dining room for what he expected to be a quiet meal. He could not have been more wrong. As to everyone's surprise, Callie proceeded to set up a karaoke area only for her and began belting out share songs. While Ramsey normally expresses his displeasure through screaming and swearing, this time he couldn't contain himself and began giggling nonstop. None of his fellow dining patrons looked amused by the racket, because even though Callie clearly regarded herself as a superstar, she could not hold a tune. Ramsey started making rounds of the dining room, asking the other customers to rate the owner's showmanship. Everyone was on Ramsey's side, with one elderly woman simply exclaiming, Oh my God, in shock, as Callie yelled out the lyrics alongside her unique dance moves. But perhaps the ultimate burn came when Ramsey remarked to a diner, I don't know what's more scary, the food or the singing. She responded with, I don't know, they compliment each other pretty much. <laughs> it looks like Ramsey may have met his equal in dishing out insults. <laughs> Hippie Hotel on Hotel Hell. Is this a dream? Is this really happening? As a chef, Ramsey loves mushrooms and has numerous recipes that incorporate them. However, after his visit to the Applegate River Lodge, it quickly became apparent that he does not like human-sized mushroom costumes. Ramsey was unprepared for the antics of hotel owner Richard, or as he insisted Ramsey call him, Pa Butt. Pa Butt. Pa Butt. Pa Butt. We're just butlings, all of us are in around here. <laughs> As hotel guests began turning in for the night, Richard got the party started, with a live band and a hippie atmosphere, with a large hippie crowd turning out to support him. Ramsey watched the party unfold as people dreamily danced with pets flung around their necks and came out dressed in giant mushroom costumes. While Ramsey was shocked and slightly amused at first, he quickly became sick of the partying and noise as it carried on past his bedtime. After being woken up countless times through the night, a frustrated Ramsey went to the window ledge and exclaimed, I'm going to jump out the <laughs> this is crazy. Clearly not a happy guest. Finally, he had to go down to Richard's strangely named Butt Hut to drag the owner out and talk some sense into him. I'm, I'm wondering why this place is still open. Hotel Hell, Bad Dinner Theater. You're pretending to be Sherlock Holmes. Gordon Ramsay is a classic face for UK entertainment and influencers. Everyone has at least heard of him and knows that he is a true Scottish celebrity. That's why Ramsay was so confused when he visited a thoroughly American hotel run by American owners who tried to pass as genuine Brits during their recurring murder mystery performances. Come to me, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It appears the game is afoot. This particular owner sat down with Ramsey one-on-one -on -one to discuss his technique, explaining that he had studied the art of an English accent and taught himself how to mimic one exactly. But he didn't stop there. He went on to claim that his version of a British accent wasn't just good, it was better than Ramsey's own accent. I've studied this accent long and hard. In fact, mine is better than your British accent. Understandably, this didn't impress Ramsey in the slightest. Things went downhill from there, with Ramsey tearing apart the murder mystery premise as so much effort and preparation went into a venture that only earned a $200 profit. You're pretending to be Sherlock Holmes, and upstairs, we're empty. In addition to the measly profit, none of the customers who arrived for the murder mystery actually ended up staying the night at the hotel, which undermined the point of it entirely. Ramsey could see right through the owner, slamming him for his selfishness by saying, And you prance around like some f***ing idiot while your wife is slaving away in the kitchen. And calling the whole thing simply mad. Leave the British accents to the pros. Ramsey searching for invisible filth. Does that make anybody else feel sick? Because yeah. right now, disgusted. Ramsey doesn't just bring himself when he goes hunting through some of the worst hotels in America. He also brings his own collection of investigative tools to assess the cleanliness of the rooms in which he stays. This often leads to revolting results. Charging guests to sleep on such filth is outrageous. At the Four Seasons Inn, Ramsey found himself in outdated, neglected rooms with mysterious grime coming from the hotel's human and canine guests. With Ramsey in town, the hotel had attracted some much-needed customers, but what Ramsey did next scared them all away again. He called the guests together in one room and then shone a black light around the bedroom. Black light is used to detect bodily fluid stains, and unfortunately for all of the guests, Ramsey revealed dozens of these fluid stains all over the bed. He ruthlessly investigated the linens, pillows, and even the carpet underneath the guests' feet with the light, eliciting lots of disgusted comments from the guests who had slept in those conditions. I don't want to stay here tonight. I don't want to put my head on that pillow or any of the other pillows. Ramsey turned on the owner and berated him for making him sleep in such an unhygienic bed, which prompted another couple to denounce the hotel and cancel their stay. Ramsey's Rotisserie Rage I'm so sorry, but you, as customers, deserve better. When visiting Towns Inn in West Virginia, Gordon Ramsay discovered one of the biggest health hazards of a hotel that he has ever stayed in. Upon arriving at the hotel, Ramsay encountered cracking ceilings, dead insects, and mysterious locked drawers in the guest rooms. However, the real drama began once he reached the kitchen. Ramsay was floored to learn that the kitchen wasn't the only place where staff were told to store food. They were also expected to leave frozen food outside in old stand-up free Freezers, right beside the trash bins. Watch your... Out here? Yes. Um, right here next to the trash, yes. Everything from dozens of appetizers to main courses, all in unhygienic and unprotected freezers next to dangerous and unsanitary refuse. Ramsey could barely contain his anger and set out to teach the hotel owner a lesson. He took customers outside to show them the conditions that their food came from, and they were both furious and disgusted. One woman was so shaken that she canceled the rest of her order, a move which Ramsey probably secretly respected. I just canceled my order. Following the freezer fiasco, Ramsey headed into the main kitchen to evaluate its workings. To his amazement and disappointment, the chef removed an entire rotisserie chicken from the freezer for an order. Covered in frost and freezer burn, it definitely was how Ramsay branded it. Disgusting. A server was then forced by Ramsay to carry the chicken out on a tray and admit to diners that it was cooked not that day or even that week, but six months ago in a grocery store. While everyone has leftovers sometimes, six months is stretching it a little. After the owner still refused to take responsibility for the dire state of affairs. A lot of people say it's it's good, I agree. Ramsey pulled rank and asserted himself as the head chef he is by shutting the restaurant down. Before you start launching your own hotel investigations, take a second to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you always know when we put out a new video. And if you're looking for more Ramsey, check out some of our other videos.